Hi everyone, it's Mark Barnes here and I can't believe that it's almost been a year since I made my very own first unboxing video of this Roland Axe Edge keytar and now that I've had the instrument for a year and I've been out gigging with it, I've been designing sounds, I've actually sold some of my sounds to people across the world. I thought it would be right to maybe come back and actually make a one year review video. So I hope you enjoy it. Disclaimer folks, I do not work for Roland, Roland do not send me gear to test or for free or anything like that, I have nothing to gain by giving you any false information, everything I say will be my genuine thoughts and opinions after having this instrument for a year. Also all the sounds you hear will be di recorded directly out of the stereo out on the axe edge, plugged into my Behringer audio interface and recorded onto a stereo track in Logic Pro. There'll be no external effects, there's no fancy expensive preamps in the signal chain, no fancy compressors or effects chains, everything you hear will be coming directly from this instrument. And I have to say the effects that are on it are really good, you don't really need much external processing to make this instrument sound good. So firstly, let's talk about the construction. How's it stood up? It's been gigged really heavily. How's it fairing up? Is it looking a mess and well gigged? Well, actually, no, it does have a few scratches and scuffs, but it's still in pretty much pristine condition. So it's lasted, it took some dunts along the way, but you're always going to get that when you're gigging with an instrument and overall I'm really happy with how new and spanking it still looks when you're on. So I've got a couple of minor criticisms regarding the build and design. Um, first one I'd say this is the biggest thing that I think should have been changed in the design is the screen here. When you're in the plane position it's actually impossible to read this screen. You can see this number display here fine because it's angled. They should have angled the screen up like the way they did on the Roland AX7 all those years ago because you find yourself you have to tilt it like this all the time to look at the screen. How I get around that problem is by storing my patches and favourites and all that I need them for the songs and that sort of get around that problem. It's not a biggie but I would say that's my biggest criticism about the design. Um, one other thing I would say about it um, it's <coughs> got a mic, excuse me, it's got a mic input for the vocoder on the back here. It's also got a microphone input level knob. It's tiny and in dark light in a club or whatever when you're playing, it's very difficult to see how far you've got the level up. So possibly maybe even a proper knob on the actual body would have maybe been better that you can see and adjust your mic level in a live situation. It 
in my opinion, the internal sound engine in the Axe Edge is absolutely fantastic. For a sin that's sub a thousand pounds, I paid eight three nine for this. I think now they retail for just below eight hundred. The synth engine is fantastic. It uses a system whereby you've got a program made up of four tones, basically like four layer combination sounds for every patch and each tone consists of four partials. As well as your four tones, you can layer a vocoder part on top of it so you don't sacrifice a tone for the vocoder. So in total, each program can have four tones and one vocoder. The tones, I said, have four partials, but they also can be either a virtual analog oscillator or an extensive PCM library. And there is a really extensive set of pre-PCM sounds loaded into this machine. On top of that, You've got two LFOs, two envelopes per tone, a filter per tone, loads of modulation destinations, and then when you layer it all together, you've got the same again in the master. You've got LFOs and envelopes and uh, it filters on the master. Your partials can also run using oscillator sync. FM, you can have ring modulation and loads of fancy stuff. It's really capable of deep sound. It's a very deep engine that's very difficult to program. The digital to analog conversion within the synth sounds very good to me. It sounds better than other old products I've had in the past. I've got an FA06 behind me here, and I think you just have a beefier sound in general from the Axe Edge. I'm going to demonstrate this by playing a similar sound on both machines and let you hear that. So I've got the Axe Edge to one side now. I'm recharging the batteries. Incidentally, it takes eight AA rechargeable batteries. I've got a set of Duracell rechargeable batteries that charge in about 10 to 15 minutes and they last for about three hours. Um, I don't have a problem with the battery system. A lot of people say they should have a sort of laptop style battery in it which I think would have added to the weight and it would have took ages to charge. It would last longer, but it would take ages to charge. Basically, the way I work it is I have them charged before I go to the gig. I do the first set, which is usually between an hour and 15 minutes and an hour and 45 minutes. I come off for the break, I stick them in charge, and then they're well charged for the next set. Um, I've never had them running dead on me in a gig or anything, so I actually have no issues with the battery system that Roland have chosen to use. <laughs> I need to talk about some of the things that I think I'm not so good about. So my biggest gripe with the Axe Edge is the editing system. So to feasibly design your own patches, you really need to use the iOS editor. It works on Android as well. It's very, very laborious. It's not well designed. Sorry, Roland guys, but You've made a great instrument, you should have made a good editor for it, it can't be that difficult. It's difficult to logically work out where things are going, it's also laggy and glitchy. 
it's not the best. It take it's taken me a lot of time to design these sounds that you're hearing me playing. Other instruments, like for example, the Korg Minilog XD here, I can design good sounds really, really quickly. Um, it took me three weeks to have pat enough patches designed for my gigs. It's difficult going. Um, worth it, because while well, the factory presets are decent, it's capable of so much more. And if you actually dig in and really stick with it and don't give up, it's definitely worth it. And I have to say, I nearly gave up. I nearly tossed the thing to one side with that editor app, but I stuck with it. And eventually I worked a workflow for it, but it's very, very difficult. I would demonstrate to it, but we take an entire video to demonstrate how to design sounds on it and maybe that'll be a video for a later date. I wanna go to the vocal dance. I've been really, really impressed with the vocoder built into this synth. It's a great feature. Really, really useful at my live gigs. It's great. Even if you just want a bit of harmony in a track, stick on the vocoder, play some chords along with your singer, and there you go. Really good sound of the Roland products that I've owned that have a vocoder, and that's been the Roland Juno Stage, the FAO 6 behind me, and this, the Axe Edge vocoder, is the best by far, in my opinion. <laughs> So one problem I've found with the synth engine is that you can't key range the arpeggiator. It's got a great arpeggiator built in, but unfortunately, well, you can key range and split certain sounds across the keyboard, you cannot do this with the arpeggiator. Now, I'll demonstrate this using this patch I've made up. So down here below this D flat, I've got it set to arpeggiate. So I would like that run all the way through while I play, play this pluck synth sound with my right hand. Unfortunately, I'll show you what happens. So if I play an op, so the arpeggiator seems to be looking for that high note that I'm playing. And I think this is something Roland could easily fix, or at least give us the option. It sometimes might desi be desirable to do that, but give us the option that we can key range the arpeggiation. So in conclusion, I think overall, this is a fantastic instrument. If you're serious about guitars like me, this is a no brainer. It absolutely blows away every other guitar on the market right now. The sound engine, terrific. The keyboard's got a great action. It's got aftertouch, aftertouch included in a synth for 800 or so pounds. Great. The ribbons even get aftertouch, which to be honest with you, I find quite awkward to use. So I usually disable it, but it's still a great feature. You can't really go wrong with this if you really want to play guitar and you want all your sounds coming from the instrument and not having to worry about having main stage or other modules or synths midied up and wireless midi and all these kind of complicated things. This is so simple. All the sounds are there. It's got a great vocoder built in, which I think is terrific. Definitely, it was a must buy for me. My biggest criticism is the editor, and please, Roland, you can fix this, guys. You can make a better editor, even if you made a PC editor. A lot of people are asking. Listen to your customers. I think it would really improve your sales of this instrument. So that is the end of my one-year review. As you can tell, I've really enjoyed having this instrument. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If you've liked it, please smash the like button and please subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll answer them honestly, as always. And many thanks and hope you all have a good day. I'm going to play you out with a little jam over a chill track in the front.